Hello everyone, I hope you all are having a great day. I want to talk to you about CP4 problems, fuel system problems, and everything else. And there's this big legal action going on with the CP4s now. When I buy a truck for our fleet, we have a few of our trucks here now that you can see. I really don't care what kind of fuel system's on it. It doesn't seem, you know, we have trucks out there, some fleets that are going a million, four, uh, 1.4 million miles on a set of injectors. And that's on Volvo uh, semi trucks. They, they usually don't go a million four. But when you put a fast system on, they seem to go a million four. You've seen me dump water in these. We have 60,000 miles on one of the trucks that I dump water in. I don't care what kind of fuel system we have. We have this Freightliner here that we developed our industrial series for the DD-15s on. They're having major issues with those. I'm not worried about it. You know why? For one, we take out almost all the water, more than anyone else, and we have a safety feature on there. We don't let water pass when it meets the uh, capacity of the filter. It'll actually stop. Guess what? If you don't have that feature, your truck's gonna stop because it's gonna pop. And then you're not just replacing filters, you're gonna replace filters too, but then you're gonna replace the fuel system. And you're gonna have probably a week of downtime to vacation wherever you break down. So you might be on your way with your RV, the Yellowstone, and you get to stay in Rawlings, Wyoming. And that's not a fun place to stay because I stayed there overnight for two nights because weather is so bad. And they hardly have any cell service. <laughs> I designed a fast fuel system for horsepower and fuel mileage and getting rid of inconsistent performance. And we have some people buying it for that. But you know what? We have more people purchasing it for saving fuel injection systems and cold weather operations, I believe. And that's just really interesting to me how the Gaulian scoring just kills these injection, injection systems. These engineers, when they test the engine, the fuel tank's up about 20 some feet in the air. That's a positive feed. And that fuel tank's not sloshing. Then they put the hot aerated return back to another tank. Ideal conditions, but Caterpillar, Caterpillar says there's at least 10% air in stationary fuel. So 10% air up there. If we take common service topic from 1968, then it talks about where the excess air comes from and vapor comes from sloshing, going down the road, so only 10% goes up. The hot air eater turn goes back and agitates it. Another addition to that 10% air. Then when it's sucking under fuel under a vacuum, you have vapor. Now we add even more vapor above that 10%. Okay, see where I'm going with this? When that hot fuel gets warmer, it gets thinner. The thinner your fuel is, or the thinner the liquid is under a vacuum, for you engineers listening to this, the more vapor you have. Huh. Now, I believe it came from Milwaukee School of Engineering. I have a lot of information up here. It's a little scattered at times, but I have files on this stuff. And I believe it came from them that it's a, at 140 degrees and above, every 20 degrees above that 140 degree mark cuts your lubricity in half. Okay, so here's what's going on. When fuel expands or when a liquid expands from like heat, it becomes thinner. When a liquid is under a vacuum, you have vapor. And the thinner the liquid, i.e. heating the fuel up in the expansion, the more vapor you have, okay? So that's where we're gonna help out with lubricity majorly, especially in the summer with these engines that are returning a lot of fuel back to the tank and heating it up. You know, that's, it's great for winter operations, uh, keeping them warm, okay? but it's hurting you on the other end of the lubricity for your expensive fuel injection system. Now, covering that expansion, I, this will make it really easy. When you go into higher altitudes, up in the Rockies or wherever, you're losing performance. One of the reasons you're losing performance is atmospheric pressure going through your turbos, okay? We can't do anything with that. But what we can do is the atmosphere, we can help with the fueling part because the atmospheric pressure is pushing down on the fuel to bring it up to your injection pump, okay? Remember, in that fuel system, they don't have to do that because it's gravity fed from 20 some feet above. But when you're in the mountains going up without a fuel system, our fuel system on there, you're increasing vacuum, just like a dirty filter. You're increasing vacuum to get the fuel up because you're losing atmospheric pressure, so you increase the amount of vapor. Fuel starvation. That's why we help out in the higher altitudes. Now, remember, I can't help you out through the, with the air going in through the turbo. That you're on your own there. But I can help you out with the fueling side. We're going to keep it more consistent. But then we come to Caterpillar here, talking about blowing injector tips off. When you get rid of the fluid dampening, I like to call it a shock absorber, you have up to 50% greater force of the plunger down on the tip. Pop. 
These are tighter tolerances. Now we're talking about galling and scoring. That's a transfer of one metal surface of one component item to the other component, okay? That's the lack of lubrication. Diesel fuel is here to be burned and to lubricate. The higher your injection pressure, the tighter the tolerance is, the more critical the lubrication is. We're gonna increase your lubrication by at least 10%. Milwaukee School of Engineering, the number one school, premier school in engineering in the country, says that 75% of hydraulic system failures are due to fluid contaminants. They say the number one fluid contaminant is air. Then when you go to these service topics, and you have to dig for these. These aren't just out there to be, you know, go in, oh, water capacity, it talks about water, talks about dirt. But when you dig into these Fortune 500 companies, and you dig into what's really going on, you start finding stuff. You go to the Bosch and Denzel fuel injector failure prevention. It talks about fuel starvation. You know what fuel starvation is? Air. So when we go out and get these trucks, I don't really care what system's on it. We're gonna make the fuel injection system last. All right, so those of you with the CP4 problems, if you want an answer right away, put a FAST system on there. And you know, the thing is, is that I've qualified people before, I've been to shows, and I don't try to sell it to everybody. I ask them some questions. This one guy, he came to me, he keeps his truck for three years, doesn't do any pot, uh, modifications to it, he uses about 10,000 miles a year, keeps it for three years, He's, he's in warranty the whole time, and he lives in North Carolina, so I can't help him out with cold weather. It really doesn't get cold there. So he doesn't really need one, but if you're gonna be keeping your truck and operating it, and you wanna get where you're going, FAST is gonna give you the insurance to get there. We're gonna improve your bottom line better than I'm gonna improve my bottom line selling those units.